Hey there, Applied English. Welcome back to the second part of this lesson. I hope you guys really enjoyed our virtual tour of room 201, my classroom. The Everything that you saw in that video, including the routines that we talked through in that video, um, are what I would expect you to follow just once you're finally um, in my classroom this week to learn. I know I'll need to reteach those just a little bit, but I hope that that video helps you to feel a little more prepared or uh, helps you uh, know what to expect when you come into my classroom later this week. As a second part of our lesson today, we are going to work through our next set of short story vocabulary. Specifically, the 10 words we're looking at this time come from two stories. Eight of the words come from the man, which we'll be covering uh, starting today, hopefully. The other two words come from the sniper, which is a story that you will see on your um, unit test coming at the end of next week. If time does allow in this lesson, we'll, we'll start reading the man. We'll just kind of see how long vocabulary takes us. Uh, upcoming in our next lesson are notes on symbolism, along with a little activity there. And then we'll uh, read and discuss the bulk of the man. It's a little bit of a longer story, so we'll move through quite a bit of it in our next lesson. Let's do it. So you guys are working on short story vocabulary set number two right now. Um, if I were to click on it now, all I would see is directions. I'm working on the video now, and I'll upload our document here for you guys to complete virtually after I'm done defining the words for you. So let's get to work on that. I'll open it up right here. Our 10 words this time around, and I like to read these out loud so that you can hear them, kind of see how things are spelled and pronounced before we look at them, are Lieutenant, Inopportune, Confront, Withered, Twitch, Wearily, Charlatan, Blase, Peer, and Parapet. These first eight come from the man, the story that we're starting hopefully today. The other two words are coming from the sniper. It's a much shorter story. That's the text that you'll see on your unit test. So as we look, we're given, once again, all the parts of speech, along with uh, some definitions there. We simply have to match them. Just like the last time we did vocab, my recommendation is to start with the ones that you know. So let's say I know that, well, I know the word confront a lot, right? To confront means to fight someone or challenge someone, right? So it looks like I'm going to be looking for a verb. I see to approach or challenge someone right there. Turn my autosave off. To approach or challenge someone, to look at intently or curiously, to make a quick sudden motion, confront is going to be this one right here. Confront. There we go. So I, I can already use confront. I know I won't use it again. Maybe as a little symbol, I'll just use strike through. That's just a, that gives me a visual that I know I won't need that word again. Noticing parts of speech as well. So I've got adjective noun. I do see that I have an adverb here as well. Let's say I know the, the clue that most adverbs end in ly, and I do see wearily right here. Let's say I don't even know what wearily is, but I know it's an adverb. I can use that strategy right now as well. Wearily. One thing I forgot to say just a moment ago is that I highly recommend that you try these on your own just before I, um, before I cover the rest of these. So I'll make sure you can see them all. If I zoom out a little bit, there you go. So now that you can see all the words and their definitions, I encourage you to try these on your own a bit before I finish defining these using my dictionary. Feel free to pause the video here and, and work on these on your own. We'll see if we can uh, define these together in just a moment. All right. So thank you for uh, your patience there and trying this on your own. Let's work through the rest of these definitions using our dictionary to fill these out. I've used confront and wearily. I'm going to strike through wearily as a symbol for me. There we go. And now I'm going to pull open my dictionary online, or you can use a paper one if you like, to find the rest of these. I'm going to open up Chrome again. And what's my first word? I'll, I'll use lieutenant. Lieutenant definition. As a reminder, I, re I actually recommend not using Google's dictionary. Uh, maybe that's just a pet peeve of mine, but I like to use an official dictionary. My favorite one is Merriam-Webster. Lieutenant. Oh, go away. I see that it is a noun, first of all. An official empowered to act for a higher official or an assistant. Let's see if I can find that in my vocab. Once again, looking for nouns. Liar or con artist? No. A low wall? No. An official who serves a higher official. There it is. Oops. I realized I made a mistake there. It shouldn't be take serves. An official who serves a higher official. Cool. Lieutenant. Awesome. 
Now I'm just going to go down the line. Let's see if I can do more of these. Inopportune. Let's look it up. I see it's an adjective. Inconvenient, unseasonable. They don't give me a whole lot here, do they? Let's just work through my adjectives and see if I can find something similar. Weekend, dying, or lifeless? No. Happening at a bad time or uncaring? Looks like happening at a bad time, inconvenient, is my best one here inopportune. Just a reminder that not every um, not every definition is going to be word for word with every dictionary, so go with the ones that are closest. Got inopportune there. Halfway there. Withered. Withered. Oops, no thesaurus. Withered. So I see here that wither is a verb right here. It also gives me some other forms, right? There's withered and withering. So maybe what I'll do here is I'll read the verb definition here and see if it matches anything else. But it looks like withered is going to be a different form. So let's see. Wither means to become dry and sapless, to shrivel, to lose vitality, force, or freshness. Wither is also a noun. Let's see if I can match this. If I can't match this automatically, maybe I'll skip it for last. Let's see. Any verbs to look intently? No. To make a quick sudden motion? No. Uncaring? This one's kind of hard for me to match right now, so maybe I'll save that one for last. Let's do twitch. 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 A verb. To move, to, to move, to move jerkily. To undergo a brief spasmodic muscular contraction. That's a mouthful. To pluck. To move or pull with sudden motion. Let's see if I can find that. It's a verb. To make a quick sudden motion is to twitch. Notice that as I eliminate twitch, it's going to make withered much easier later on here. Charlatan. Charlatan. A noun. A quack. One making usually showy pretenses to knowledge or ability. A fraud. A faker. Let's see if that matches any of my nouns. A liar or con artist, someone who pretends to be someone else. That's got to be it. Charlatan. So it should be noted, so every charlatan is a liar, but not every liar is a charlatan. In order to be a charlatan, you have to be a fraud. You have to, you have to pretend to be someone that you're not in order to get what you want. Get rid of charlatan. We're down to four words here, so it should be easier to eliminate as we go. Let's try blasé next. Blase. An adjective. Apathetic to pleasure or excitement. Sophisticated, worldly wise, unconcerned. Okay. Does that match an adjective? We can dying or lifeless? No. I only have one other adjective. Uncaring, not excited about anything is blase. There we go. It corrected the little accent on the E for me, which is nice. Only three words to go, so that's going to help me eliminate. Remember that withered was difficult for me, so maybe I'll save that for absolute last. Peer is next. So this is telling me that peer is a noun, one that's equal standing with another, a member of five ranks in British. That's probably not true. I also see that peer is a verb, meaning to look narrowly or curiously or to look searchingly at something. So peer can be a noun or a verb. Maybe it's wise for me to save peer for a last two because I still see I have a noun and a verb to choose from. Let's try parapet and see if I have better luck there. Notice that I'm using a few different strategies to help me with these words. I'm trying to model these strategies for you to use as well. Parapet, a noun, a wall, rampart, or elevation of earth to protect soldiers, a low wall or railing to protect the edge of a platform, roof, or bridge. I think I remember seeing that. A low wall along the edge of a roof is a parapet. Parapet. Boom. Now remember, we said that peer could be a noun or a verb, but we got rid of our last noun. So the last thing that it could be is a verb. To look intently or curiously at something is to peer. There we go. And all that leaves left was our most difficult word, for me at least, withered. Must be this adjective, meaning weakened, dying, or lifeless, withered. There we go. So I've got all 10, word, 10 of my words defined here. Might not be a bad idea to pause here and get those definitions on your own. Make sure that you have these memorized.
we'll work through a couple of sentences as well before I put this up in Schoology. I'm also going to unline these because it's annoying. There we go. Let's do it. Practice. Use each of the following words correctly in its own complete sentence. I think this time around, I'll do the first two, and then you can do those last eight for practice on the next page here. Starting with lieutenant. Now, my definition says that a lieutenant is an official who serves a higher official or an assistant. Whenever I think of lieutenant, I think of the military, right? So I might say something like, for my sentence, I might say, the general told his, I'll underline this, lieutenants. Maybe I'll give him a couple of lieutenants, right? The general told his lieutenants to um, wake up all of the soldiers. I will say wake up the rest. The rest of the soldiers. That works, right? The general told his lieutenants, his officers, his officials, his, uh, his assistants to wake up the rest of the soldiers. That's a fine sentence by itself. What about inopportune? I don't remember. Inopportune, adjective. Happening at a bad time. Whenever I think of the word inopportune, I, would, I usually use the phrase inopportune moment, right? Or inopportune time. I might say something like, the middle of, a, of an intense classroom discussion is an inopportune time or moment to ask to go to the bathroom. The bathroom. Right, so inopportune, happening at a bad time. It's not the right time to ask to go to the bathroom when you're in the middle of an intense classroom discussion, one that you want to be there to, to hear and to chime in on. Let me give you guys a little more space for confront right here. There we go. So what I'm going to do is put this document into Schoology. Hit enter one more time here. There we go. So whether it is right there. I'm going to put this document into Schoology. So those of you learning virtually today can go in and finish the rest of your sentences. Use the definitions provided for you here, the ones that we discussed in this video, to help you work through these sentences. And just like last time, I'll, I'll leave some comments on these sentences to let you know where you're getting these words correct and where you might need to, to look at them once again. One more thing that I want to add just before you guys go off to do this assignment here. One thing I noticed on our last vocab assignment is that quite a, quite a few of you copied sentences from the internet into this space, which it's okay to, to do your research and see these words used in, in their sentences, but it's hard for me to know that you know these words or not if you're not using your own complete sentences. So one thing I would recommend is maybe look up a couple of sample sentences for these words if you're stuck, but then try to write one on your own anyway. One thing I, I did with our last document was I went through and highlighted things and left comments. I'll do the same this time around to show you where you're getting words uh, really, really correct and also where you um, are still not quite entirely um, using words correctly in their own sentences. Best of luck to you as you write. Have some fun. Contact me in Teams if you're having stuck or if you're having trouble or if you're stuck on a specific word.